a lot of us content creators run into the same problem. And that is that the more we try to grow our blogging business, the more time we end up spending on it almost unexpectedly until it eats up like every ounce of our energy and every minute of our free time. It doesn't have to be this way. You don't have to pick between content creation and business and life. You can have both. In this video, I wanna show you how you could take many of the tasks we do as content creators and cut down a lot on the time that we spend on them, saving at least 25% of the time that we spend on our content business and doing it in a way that actually allows us to grow our business even better. One of the first cool ways that I'm automating my blogging business is by using reusable blocks in WordPress. I've shown this before when I was talking about setting up email marketing, but these are super cool. Take a look at this blog post. This is on cookforfolks.com. You'll see that there's this kind of button right here. The cool thing is, is I've put this into a reusable block. So if ever I wanted to make this a little bit bigger banner and just change out how it looks on all of the articles where I've placed it, I could update it in one place and it's updated everywhere. Later on in the blog post, and I have this reusable block appearing in many blog posts across the website, I have this sort of ad. And this ad plus this other button down below are again, part of a reusable group of blocks that I can literally put in any blog post. It takes me a couple of seconds. Let me show you exactly how this works. I go to create a new post, then anywhere in the blog post, I just go to add a block like normal, click the plus sign, and then I can start typing in the name of whatever I called it. So I have lead and magnet modal one and two. And the cool thing is, is each of these buttons doesn't just lead them to a page where they can sign up for an email list, but when I click on it, it actually opens up this modal, which people can see exactly what they'd be getting if they sign up for this newsletter, and then they can give me their name and their email address right there without ever leaving the page. These tend to have a higher conversion rate than when you send them over to another page, and it keeps them in the same blog post. This would take several minutes to set up, even if I just copied and pasted in from one blog post to another, or even if I just copied the block from one blog post to another, which WordPress now allows us to do, which is pretty cool. The neat thing here is I can create it once. And if I ever want to update anything that I'm saying here, I want to change the way the newsletter works. Again, I update it in one place and voila, it's updated everywhere. That can save me a ton of time. There's also a ton of other applications for using these reusable blocks other than just, you know, email list signups like this. You could use them for a listing of affiliate products. Maybe you create a list of the affiliate products for each blog post category that you have. And so they're just the products that make sense for that category. And you put that block in every blog post in that category. You could do the same thing with social media buttons. If you ever were gonna need to potentially update those buttons, which is possible, you could put those buttons anywhere you wanted inside of a blog post or on a page by using that reusable block. If you ever update one, it updates all of them. If your theme doesn't automatically generate an author bio, this would be a great use. Opt-ins for email marketing like I showed. How about ads for your own products? Maybe you have an info product, create an ad for it. Or how about if you put a block on every single article on your website where you could share a joke of the day if that were relevant to a niche that you're in or some sort of news or timely update so that every single time that you have something like that that you wanna share, it can be featured as part of every single blog post on your website. And again, it's something you can update once a week and it updates across the site and everybody's gonna see it. Something like that could make your brand much more memorable as well as make your website just much more interesting. And honestly, it could make it much more likely that people would wanna come back and visit it knowing that they're always gonna be able to find the new and interesting things. Now look, if you think that could save you some time or you thought that was just a cool tip, I'd invite you to let me know by clicking the like button below. Also, if you find the same to be the case on any of these other tips that I have for you today, it's just an open invitation. Next, let's talk about batching photos. Photos on blog posts are, I think it's more and more and more important that we take good photos, that they're more unique. Stock photos are fine and they can fill in on a blog post, especially in a pinch. But more often than not, if you can take an original photograph, it's gonna be better. Or if you can just generate an original image, whether that's artwork or something else. Batching this process saves me a ton of time. I have multiple times been in the middle of writing a blog post, thought I really need this image. So I go out, I get the, the products that are involved or the whatever props are involved. I put it together, I kind of stage a photo, I take a couple of pictures, and then I go back to my blog post an hour later because of all the time it took to set up. Don't do that, it's a waste of your time. So instead what I do now, if I need a picture of, you know, something on my chicken coop in the backyard, 
I literally go out and I take 40 pictures of different things, right? By doing that, I have those images ready for me for future blog posts, even if I don't have a specific use case for them right now. I'll often do the same thing if I'm out traveling or if I'm just out and about and there's anything going on that's relevant to a niche that I have a website in. I'll go ahead and I'll take photos or even get some video footage that I can use as B-roll for YouTube videos. Then, and this next part is really important, when I get back to my computer, I transfer all those files directly to the computer and put them in a folder. If I have time, I might go through and name each of those images real quick, but at very least, I'm going to put them in folders so that I know what the topic is. I can then in the future add all those up to the website, in the media library, and they're just there, ready to be used in a blog post. I find that this could save me easily a couple of hours a week, assuming that I just write one blog post every day. This next one is easily one of the biggest time savers I've ever used and I always use it. And that is having an ongoing hit list of articles that you plan to write. That way at any point in time you can sit down, grab one off the list and just get started. So many times people have said, you know, it's really hard for me to come up with topics. I'll go sit down and I rack my brain for half an hour trying to find the perfect thing to write about. Instead, you batch that process and maybe it's slow getting started. Maybe it does take 20 or 30 minutes before you really kick it off. But next thing you know, in the course of an hour, you have 40 topics to write. And so when it comes time to sit down and write, you just pick one off the list. This has so many benefits besides time savings, including being able to batch articles together by similar topic, knowing that these go well together and creating a good cluster of content, making sure that as you write them all, you interlink between them properly and they can fit well together rather than just being independent, separate, individual, totally different pieces of content that you just came up with one today and one three months from now. The next one along those same lines is to batch your research. We have our writers spend at least 30 minutes researching a topic before they ever sit down to write an article. Why do we have to do this? Because they're not always writing on our websites where they can write you know, five articles in a row on a similar topic and just kind of batch that research together. Instead, they're writing an article here for one person's website and an article here for another. So I have them spend at least 30 minutes doing research, offline research, YouTube research, as well as a little bit of online research to make sure they understand the topic well before they ever start writing. You could cut out that 30 minutes by batching your research and by doing a lot of that research during times when you're doing other things and could easily multitask. I'm talking about when you're driving, you're commuting somewhere. Why not listen to podcasts about your niche? This isn't specific research for an individual article. This is getting to understand your industry and knowing more about how other people see it and the things that they do and getting expertise from other people. Immerse yourself in your industry as much as possible outside of the writing time. And then when it comes time to sit down and write a blog post, a much higher percentage of the articles you write are gonna be able to come right out of your head. This next one is for email marketing. Now, if you're not doing email marketing now, I'm can, I can guess that one of the main reasons for that is you're worried about being forced to create an additional piece of content all the time, right? If you wanna put out an email every week to your email list, well, that's another little piece of content, no matter how short, that I have to worry about putting out every single week. The best way really to keep an email list warm is to make sure you have content going out regularly. When you create your email list, create an automated drip campaign. When people sign up, it's gonna send them an email and maybe a couple days later, a second and a third. Let them know what to expect from this email newsletter that you're sending out. Let them know what's gonna happen. Send them some really cool, interesting stories that get them kind of bought in a little bit more to the brand and then get them on this regular weekly, bi-weekly or even monthly email newsletter. Then batch those newsletters. Come up with a format that works really well and that way you can sit down once and draft four, five, even six emails and that can put you way ahead. Just schedule them all out at the appropriate spacing and then set a reminder on your calendar to come back in six weeks and do it again. You're going to be able to actually do a good job of email marketing, get the benefits of that, but save tons of time. One of the biggest wastes of time is switching between tasks, switching between writing blog posts and then writing emails and then doing all of these other things. The more that we can group tasks into batches, the better. Do it with your email marketing, just like you're doing it with your images, research, Keyword research, wow, there's a lot of batching going on here. So next we're gonna talk about one that is not batching and that is creating an information product that is completely automated. 
This is one of the best ways to make more money from your blog without reducing its passiveness. It's amazing. Just imagine this, you have knowledge in your industry, you're excited to start making more money, and so you're like, mm, maybe I'll do some consulting, right? And so you put it out there and you get a person that signs up. And next thing you know, you're spending an hour prepping for that consultation because you're probably kind of nervous for your first one and you wanna make sure you're totally prepared. You spend an hour in the consult for that person and then maybe there's even some email follow-up after. And that one consult took you two, three, four hours. It's a lot of time to spend with one customer giving you a little bit of money, right? What if instead you create information products that maybe cost a little bit less but can be sold at a much higher volume and where they sell themselves? The content on your website drives people to go buy the info product, they purchase the info product, and it automatically is sold to them. We use lots of different tools for this kind of thing. One that we've been using forever is called SendOwl. I'll link to it in the description so that you can go check it out if you want to. But basically, SendOwl is a great delivery system for digital uh, information for when somebody makes a purchase and they just need to receive an email, maybe with a download link, or maybe the email itself just contains a link to the content. Create an info product that can be sold automatically and that you don't have to do any real follow-up work on. I'll say this is gonna save them at least two or three hours a week over other forms of monetization that pay out a little bit more or a lot more than ads and affiliate links. Honestly, I've had info products take a blog from maybe $10,000 a month to over six figures every single month by launching a single info product. This next one becomes incredibly important as you start to be more successful as a content creator. And that is learning how to manage and filter email. We as bloggers, probably all of you are getting tons of email. Creating email filters can be a fantastic way to, yeah, move some to spam, but also to set aside some that you might want to look at, but are only gonna look at if you have time for. I'll give you a specific example of that. Here's an email inbox, right? Um, there's a order here, somebody ordered something, there's, um, this is saying that there's an update for a theme, and then here's one from Haro, they send me like three a day, right? So if they all come to my inbox, and by the way, this is just the focused ones, if I go to other, it's already filtering out a whole bunch of other ones that it notices are um, repetitive emails, right? So I go to focused here and it's still a ton of stuff. What if I create a folder here, I call it Haro, and then every email that comes in with the word Haro in the subject line automatically gets put in that folder. I don't just wanna automatically mark those as spam, I get them for a reason, but I don't read three of them a day. I'm only gonna look at them if I happen to have time today to look at the opportunities available to me on Haro. Likewise, if something's coming from the Home Depot or other places where I regularly purchase things, those are just going to be receipts. If I automatically put them in receipts because I want to save them, but I don't need to look at them right now, it's going to help dramatically declutter the inbox and it's going to do it without me having to do anything, ever get distracted by all of these emails that are coming in. I have found that at very least, no matter how much time I'm working on my blog every week, even if you're a 10 hour week blogger or a 40 hour week blogger, this could easily save you 10 minutes to an hour every single day depending on how many emails you're getting. Now look, if you are a 40 hour week blogger, these things alone could easily save you about 13 and a half hours, I think at a minimum, every single week while still allowing you to do all of the things that all the big bloggers making lots of money are doing. It's amazing how much you can save simply by batching and by automating a handful of things. And if you're one of those people that's only got five to 10 hours a week to work on your blog, this could be some ways to add in some of those more advanced things that are gonna make you more successful without having to increase the amount of time you're spending. Now, obviously not all of these are gonna to apply to everybody that's watching this video, but I encourage you to take those things that are using up a lot of your time and look for ways to batch them or automate them, or in some cases, eliminate them from your daily and weekly routines. That way you can free up more time for life and more time to grow your business. Now, I'd love to hear from you. What are the ways that you're automating, that you're batching, that you're saving time? Are you using AI to do some of these things for you? What are you doing as a time savings? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear all about it.